fixed-fold cameras. Your successful completion of the demonstrated repair ultimately depends on the quality of your tools, the condition of your camera, and most importantly, your repair ability. An 80 millimeter planar that does not complete the cycle. You can manually wind the shutter and release it with the release pin and see that the shutter is not complete the cycle. Stuck halfway. So we we'll begin by removing the front plate, the name plate. A spanner is used, of course. The next step is to remove the bayonet ring. Note the notch. Remove the three screws that hold in the next ring. Don't particularly know the name of the ring. It just needs to be removed. And then we'll have another ring that will have to be removed. And it is also held in with three screws. Always make sure you use the proper size slotted screwdriver when uh, attacking the screws so that the screws are not accidentally marred. Be careful not to lose the detent bearing. Just lift it free and set it aside. And then lift the shutter speed ring and set it aside. Now we have the aperture ring. Set it aside and go ahead and remove the lens. You might have to use a spanner wrench. The whole group will come out as a unit. We'll call the next part to be removed the housing cover. It's held in place with nine screws. Make note of the two screws holding the spring plates. They need to be put back in the same positions. It might help come time to reassemble if you lay the screws out in a small pattern as you remove them. It is a little tricky to remove the housing cover as the alignment has to be shifted a bit to get it to clear the uh, lever. Once it's clear, it'll lift free. Now remove the black mask ring. Use the tip of a flat screwdriver to pop the low tension spanner ring free and lift the shutter speed cam plate. Note the main wind gear in relation to the main wind rack. The main wind rack ring will lift free. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Watch for the spring as it were attached to the post. Now lift the main wind gear off of the wind pinion. That way it won't fall out when we're doing the rest of the work here. You might note the main wind spring. You can see where it attaches at two points. There's a slot that the end of the wind spring sits in at each end. And the uh, main wind spring often breaks and you can see the different lengths of the leads on the spring. The longer lead goes to the top. Okay, back to the problem at hand. The problem is being caused by the slow speed escapement. One screw is located under the retarding arm and the other is at the base end of the escapement. They both need to be loosened and the escapement lifted free. After using a cleaning solvent to flush the escapement clean, oil the points of contacts of the pinion. Flip it over and do the other side also. Reinstall the slow speed escapement as shown. It's easier if you put the, the upper screw into place before you seat the slow speed escapement. Make certain that the escapement is seated properly against the main spring. Once seated against the main spring cam lever, you can go ahead and tighten down the slow speed escapement. You might need to adjust the position of the escapement so the screw holes line up. Once they do, tighten them down completely. The shutter needs to be in the release position and the wind pinion slot needs to be in the relation shown to the red dot before the wind rack ring is installed. Hook the spring of the wind rack ring and then seat this, the ring as shown. With the wind ring installed, the wind gear the main wind gear can be dropped over the main wind spring in the position so that the tab of the main wind gear rests against the main wind spring cam. The teeth of the wind ring and the main wind gear do not actually mesh but line up in the position so as the wind ring is wound by the tensioning of the shutter rack pinion 
the gears engage. Here you can see the tension of the wind spring on the wind cam. Now the shutter speed cam plate can be put into position. Align the narrow slot of the speed cam with the lever that protrudes proudly and then also this, the speed cam has the cam cutouts that need to ride against the post of the slow speed escapement as shown here. With the speed cam in proper position, the retainer can be snapped in place. Flip the lens over and wind the shutter by using the, the slot of the wind pinion and release it. And bingo, that's what we're looking for. Forget the black mask ring. It doesn't affect the operation, but it does cover the shutter workings. Now the shutter housing needs to be installed. This is the, probably the trickiest part of the repair as the housing has to be aligned again with the post and the different levers as the uh, housing is slipped into place. It doesn't uh, uh, seat directly over the screws. Once the housing is seated, then it can be shifted so the screw holes line up. With the screw holes line up, remember to put the uh, screws in in the proper order. It helps to pick up the screws that have the, uh, the spring uh, plates on them as an assembly with the screw already into the spring plate and then seat the spring plate screw down into the slot. All the different screws need to be laid in into the proper length into the proper holes and hopefully you laid them out properly. Well anyhow, once the housing is seated completely and the screws are all in, they can be tightened down snugly. They don't tighten them down until the entire housing screws are all in place. You don't want to get a bind on any of these screws and strip them out. By working the screw with the tip of the screwdrivers, you can align the, uh, the screw with the hole and get the screw then to drop down into the hole so that it can be snugged up. It actually is a kind of a tricky procedure and maybe looks a little easier here than it is. So don't get discouraged. Keep at it till you get them aligned properly and the housing seated as it should be. Next, seat and test the aperture ring, making sure that the aperture depth of field markers are functioning. Now seat the shutter speed detent bearing and place the base of the shutter speed ring into position. It, sometimes it sticks to the bottom of the shutter speed ring, but if it separates, then that needs to be installed before the shutter speed ring is installed, making sure that the click stops will align and function properly. The retaining plate of the shutter speed control ring has a cutout that needs to go over the shutter speed click bearing. If it's not installed properly, the shutter speed dial will not turn easily. It'll be stiff. If it's aligned properly, the shutter speed dial bearing will have a little more room to function so the dial works smoothly then. Put the three screws in as they're aligned. That's the countersunk screws. This the lens can be installed at this time or it can be installed later. It doesn't really matter, but uh, when you install it, the uh, next step would be the final cover ring. And it has a notch that uh, is aligned with the uh, bayonet ring and it, it'll drop into place when it's aligned properly. And then the final step actually is then to install the uh, nameplate ring and once that's started, it can be spun into place with the tip of a screwdriver and then tightened down with a spanner, just snug enough to hold it. Okay, we'll just flip it over, kind of look things over, make sure everything's as it should be. Note the relation to the red dot in the position of the slot on the wind pinion when it is in the wound position. Now note the relation of the slot to the dot in the release position. We'll go through the demo one more time. Wound position, release position. Also note, before the lens is put back onto the camera, the shutter needs to be wound and the camera body needs to be wound. Don't forget to do these. If you try to put the, the lens on before the shutter is wound on the lens and, and the mirror is wound on the camera, you'll jam the whole system.
Thank you for watching. Inspired? Check back for new video postings.